Pastor Pram. Uh, Samuel, did I say it right? Uh, that's yeah. easy. That's easy to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I just want to welcome everyone, uh, every single one of you who is a part of the Ecclesia family. Uh, the word Ecclesia is just uh, uh, an awesome word. Uh, you know, Ecclesia, you know, that's where the word church comes from. And it's, it's a powerful word. And, and what a time to be alive and what a time to be a part of the Ecclesia, the body of Christ. So once again, I just want to say thank you so much, Pastor Pram, for uh, affording me this privilege and this opportunity uh, to get together with brothers from a different continent uh, all across the other side of the world. And uh, man, I'm just so glad that we are able to do this uh, on Zoom. And I want to just welcome every single one of uh, you that's on this call tonight. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump straight into the word, but uh, uh, it's a participation sport, okay? Uh, church is a participation sport. It's not a passive sport. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Those of you watching on Facebook, I'm going to encourage you to type something in the comment section, in the chat section. If something uh, 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 stands out for you, if, you if, if it inspires you, if you get a uh, uh, some insight from something that we're going to be sharing tonight. Uh, I want to encourage you to type something in the comment section. Let's, let's, uh, let's have a big uh, Holy Ghost party tonight. And like Pastor Pram said, you know, the Bible says uh, in uh, 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 Proverbs chapter number 23, verse 7, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. And so scripture right there, you know, Pastor Pram introduced us uh, from Proverbs 23. I wasn't, I didn't even have that scripture as part of my notes, but I think it's a Holy Ghost thing uh, that he started off in uh, 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 Romans chapter number 12, verse 2, talking about uh, the way we think. But scripture says in uh, Proverbs 23, uh, verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. So one of the most important things uh, for a New Testament believer, one of the most important things you get to do after you get born again is to renew your mind. It is to change the way you think. You start to align your thoughts uh, with the word of God, with the new covenant. My name is Tafara Butai. Oh, I almost forgot to introduce myself. My name is Tafara Butai, and I'm the pastor and lead pastor of Faith Hill Church uh, right here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, it's a young, vibrant church that's growing very fast, faster than I can keep up. Uh, we have uh, three campuses now at the moment, uh, one in Durban, uh, another one in uh, uh, Johannesburg South, and where I am is in Johannesburg North. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, uh, by the grace of God that I am here and that I'm pastoring this church. I get to be a lead pastor uh, at Faith Hill Church. I'm also connected with Caris Bible College, uh, where I teach uh, 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 at uh, some of their open weeks and some of their meetings. I'm one of the teachers at Caris Bible College. In fact, uh, the CEO of Caris Bible College International and Andrew Womack Ministries International is my mentor. His name is Billy Epperhart. So I'm very much connected to the Caris uh, Bible College fraternity. Some of my close friends uh, from the Caris Bible College and Andrew Womack Ministries uh, fraternity. And so that's me in short. I've been in the corporate world before I came into ministry. I worked as a business development manager and I was able to travel all over the world as a, a business development director at the company that I worked for. Uh, I was telling pastor before we started the broadcast that I've been to India, actually. I've been to Kolkata. Uh, we came out to Kolkata in 2013, I believe, and we went to another city right next to Kolkata to meet with some uh, executives from um, uh, Tata. And uh, I've also been to uh, Mumbai, uh, Bombay used to be called. And I've also been to Nagpur, Nagpur. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've been to, to your country, your beautiful country. And I love India. I love the food. I love the people. Uh, the hospitality was just so great. But today or tonight, we're going to be looking at something, a revelation that God gave me many, many years ago. And uh, God gave me a revelation that I uh, packaged in a book called Grace uh, in the Marketplace. Grace in the Marketplace. That's the book that I wrote. Uh, you can find this book on um, 
uh, Kindle. Uh, you can also uh, find it uh, in any uh, bookstores in, in, in South Africa. But because you are not in South Africa, I'm going to send a PDF copy to Pastor Prem and you'll be able to share with everybody uh, free of charge. So you can also enjoy uh, that book during this uh, uh, global pandemic. So uh, this book, basically what the Lord was uh, 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 sharing with me and what I put in the book uh, is the fact that there is a grace that's available for God's children. There is a grace uh, for the marketplace. There is a grace uh, for us to go out into the world and change the world. There is a grace for us to go out into the world and put uh, into work our creativity, our God-given abilities uh, so that we can change people's lives, not just within the four walls of the church, uh, but also in the marketplace. God began to speak to me uh, in 2016. That's the year that I wrote the book. He said to Farah, I want you to tell my people that I want them uh, to take what happens on a Sunday. I want it to spill over into a Monday, into a Tuesday, into a Wednesday, a Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. In other words, uh, God was instructing me to begin to empower and teach the church and, and encourage them uh, to realize uh, that God hasn't just called them to, to have a good party uh, on a Sunday morning, but God wants them to take the salt, the light of the world, which they are into the marketplace. So I know that there are many uh, people that are on this call, young, old, uh, 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 male, female, uh, different backgrounds. But there's one thing I want to encourage you uh, to realize tonight as we uh, uh, begin to chatter into this territory. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is to begin to uh, listen in with a, with, a, with a learning spirit, with a meek heart, with a, with a teachable spirit. I want you to lean in with a teachable spirit. I'm going to be sharing some things that you've never heard before. Uh, but I'm telling you, you'll find it in the Bible yeah, and, and, and it's going to inspire you. It's going to challenge you, but at the same time, it's going to inspire you. And the second thing I want you to realize as we go into this teaching is that God has never created a failure. God has never created uh, uh, someone to be a failure. God has put a purpose and an assignment in every single one of uh, uh, you who are watching tonight. And my job tonight is to spark that uh, assignment, that, that purpose, that, that, that desire, that dream that God has already put on the inside of you uh, to come back to life and to show you how you can navigate in that purpose uh, the, the, the waters of the marketplace. God God has called some of you uh, uh, to be ministers of the gospel in the, in, the, in the church mountain. God has called some of you to be ministers in the government mountain. How many of you know that it is in such a time as this that we need Christian uh, leaders in government? Amen. Uh, we need Christian leaders in, in government making policy and, 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 and deciding the direction of our nations. Uh, some of you, God has called you uh, to be ministers in the media mountain. God has called you to be ministers in the arts and entertainment. Uh, God has called some of you to be uh, 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 ministers in the education mountain. Some of you, God has called you uh, to be ministers in the family mountain. Whichever mountain God has called you to, uh, let me assure you, brothers and sisters, that there is a grace uh, that's available that when you start taking advantage of it, uh, man, you'll begin to do things that will literally uh, change people's lives, but at the same time, uh, you'll begin to do things by the grace of God, that will blow your mind. You're looking at a man uh, who grew up in a three-roomed house. I grew up in abject poverty. I grew up in, in a nation, small nation in the continent of Africa called Zimbabwe. And within that small nation, I grew up in a small town called Kwekwe. And within the small town, I grew up in a small neighborhood called Mbizo. And within the small neighborhood, I grew up in a smaller section of the neighborhood called uh, uh, Section 5. I mean, they didn't even take time out to name the neighborhood properly. They just called it Section 5. And within that section, I grew up in one of the smallest houses uh, you could ever find in that neighborhood. I grew up in a three-roomed house, grew up sleeping under the kitchen table. But it's amazing what the Lord will begin to do with you uh, when you surrender to his grace. The grace of God uh, uh, is not just the saving grace of God. Yes, the grace of God will bring you to salvation, but the grace of God is also 
also the, the, the empowerment, the supernatural ability, the anointing of God that comes on your life, that empowers you uh, to be able to do what God has called you to do. So God has a purpose on your life. God has called you to do something that will change uh, uh, people that are in your immediate sphere. And some of you, God has put a purpose on your life uh, that will be able to transform and change people's lives all over the world. I mean, having grown up in abject poverty, I, I, at the moment, my ministry is on TBN in Africa. Uh, we're on television. We uh, reach 10 million homes on the continent of Africa. Beyond that, we also have a, a ministry in the United States of America in Los Angeles called Grace in the Marketplace, and we host conferences all over North America. God can take someone who grew up in abject poverty and begin to use them to change other people's lives if you surrender to this grace that we're going to be talking about tonight. So I want to assure you, brothers and sisters, that there is an enablement. There is an, a fuel. I like to call it the, the grace of God is the octane that will propel you uh, to supernaturally do greater things in your ministry. Listen, it will propel you to get you to do supernatural things things in your business, to get you to do supernatural things in your assignment, in whatever God has called you to do. When you begin to surrender to this grace, man, I'm telling you, this grace is like a fuel, jet fuel. You will begin to do more than you could have ever done in your own natural strength. This is what, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So I want to encourage you to buckle up. If you have a seat belt, just grab it and put it on. You're going to need it. Amen. So let's go quickly to Genesis chapter number one. And I'm going to read from verse 26 to 28. Some of you are thinking I'm not going to go to the Bible, man. We're going to go to the Bible a lot tonight. Amen. Genesis chapter number one from verse 26 to 28. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible. I'm going to be reading from the Message version of the Bible. So if you are on a laptop, you can go and type Genesis 1, 26 to 28, and put MSG, and you'll be able to check out exactly uh, what I'm reading. You may be reading from the King James Bible, but I can assure you we will all land up or end up at the same place. Amen. So he says in Genesis uh, 1, 26 to 28 in the message, God spoke and he said, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, the earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. So the very first thing that God did when he created mankind was that he blessed them. So I want to submit to you, brothers and sisters, that you are already blessed. Uh, you are not uh, the cursed trying to to get blessed. God has already blessed you. Uh, the blessing of God in the life of a believer is a past tense reality. It is something that God did without your prayer, without your fasting. Prayer and fasting is important, but God did it anyway. He did it by grace. He did it motivated by his love. Love compelled him to bless us right off the bat. God blessed you uh, right from the start. So the very first thing God did when he created mankind is that, that he blessed them. So if you really believe this, I want you to type in the comment section, I am blessed, okay? Because that's what you are. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. You are not trying to deal with generational curses. No, all of that went on Jesus when he died on the cross. The Bible says in Galatians 3, verse 13 uh, uh, to 14, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith. So the blessing of God is already come upon your life. And there are two kinds of people in the church today. There are those who are blessed and believe it. And there are those who are blessed and believe it. And tonight I want to encourage you to be the one that's blessed and you believe it. Amen. Because God has already blessed you. Ephesians chapter number one, uh, verse three, the apostle Paul writing, he says, blessed be God, the father of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, who hath past tense 
blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So God has already blessed you. You're not trying to get blessed. God has already blessed you. So the very first thing that we see here, back to Genesis chapter number 126, is that the very first thing God said to Adam was to pronounce the blessing. He said, uh, you know, Adam, you are blessed. And uh, uh, now, if you're reading in the Message Bible, we see that there's a semicolon there, and then there's an open inverted comma. And uh, now, brothers and sisters, we're getting ready to read the very first things that God said to mankind. We're getting ready to read the very first things that God said to mankind. You put an inverted commas when you're getting ready to quote somebody. You're getting ready to quote, we're getting ready to quote what God said word for word. And the very first thing that God said to mankind, according to uh, Genesis 1 verse 26, is God said prosper. Did you see that? He said, prosper. Uh, the very first thing God ever said to mankind was prosper. God could have said rapture. Uh, he could have said, just hang in there. Uh, he could have said, man, just hang on. Just hold on as much as you can. It's going to be hard. But just, no, God didn't say any of that. The very first thing out of the entire vocabulary of heaven, God found it worthy and appropriate and accurate that the very first thing mankind should hear from his mouth is prosper. Hallelujah. So I want to submit to you, brothers and sisters, I'm in the continent of Africa and you are on the continent of Asia in India. And I want to submit to you that prosperity is a God idea. Prosperity is God's original intent for his children. Prosperity is not an American televangelist idea. They didn't come up with it. They're not that clever. <laughs> Amen. It's a God idea. God decided out of his entire wisdom that the very first thing that man should hear from his mouth was prosper. God wants you to prosper. It is God's plan for his children. It is prosperity. Whether there is a pandemic or not, whether there is COVID-19 or not, God's plan has not changed. God still wants his children to prosper because his prosperity is not based on what you do or don't do. It is not based on the economy of India. It's not based on the economy of Dubai. It's not based on the economy of South Africa. His blessing, his prosperity is based on the promise in his word. It is based on what Jesus did for us on the cross. He says in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, though Jesus, Jesus was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. So prosperity is a part of your redemption. It is a part of your covenant rights. Amen. He repeated it again in Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I have a plan for you. He's talking to his children primarily to Israel and ultimately to you and I. He says, I have a plan for you. The reason why I say ultimately to you and I is because God is not a respecter of persons. What he says to another, he means for another. If he said it to Israel, he means it for his children in the new covenant. If he says it to uh, Creflo Dollar, he means it uh, for Pastor Bram Samuel. I'm telling you, if he said it to Paul, he means it for Tafara. If he said it to Peter, he means it for Jan. He means it for Sunita. He means it for every Everybody. You know why? Because God is not a respect of persons. God does not show favoritism. God does not operate uh, 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 from a place of mood swings. God uh, only respects faith. The only thing he's looking for is a bunch of crazy folk that will believe his word. And if you believe his word, uh, one more time, I want you to shout in the comment section, I am prospered by God. I am prospered by God. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I have a plan for you. And this plan is not to harm you. This plan is not to hurt you, but this plan is to prosper you. This plan is to give you a hope and a future. In the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of COVID-19, God's children can have a hope and a future. God's children should be the happiest. God's children should be the most peaceful. God's children should be the ones 
that are getting excited. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, 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 being uh, uh, operating out of ignorance and, and, and foolishness. I know the difference between foolishness, presumption, and, and faith. I'm talking about faith. I'm not talking about foolishness and presumptions. I'm talking about faith. You can operate in faith, believing and standing on God's word. The very last Sunday that they said churches couldn't meet uh, in Johannesburg, South Africa, we had church. And the very first Sunday they said churches could meet, we were back in the building. You know why? Because we are standing on the promises of God. And we know that with God, a thousand will fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, and it will not come near us. It can't touch us. You know why? Because the power of God lives on the inside of us. Amen. It says in Romans chapter number eight, verse 11. It says the same spirit, same spirit. He didn't say a different spirit. He says if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. You know what makes me fired up? What makes me alive? What gives me strength is that same spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it will make my body come alive. It will defeat any germ and any virus. It will defeat anything that may try to attach itself onto my body. Why? It's the same spirit that raised, it's the resurrection power of God. And I'm telling you, it lives on the inside of every single one of you, brothers and sisters, who's watching tonight. I want you to leave this broadcast knowing this, that you are blessed and God's plan for you is to prosper. Uh, some of you may say, hey, you're quoting from the Old Testament. Third John 2 verse 1, Third John 1 verse 2, uh, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. That's a New Testament scripture right there. God's wish and God's will for his children is prosperity. And God, watch this now, this is good. God has a pandemic proof prosperity for his children. Did you hear that? God has a pandemic proof prosperity for his children. It doesn't matter what's going on in the global economy. It doesn't matter what's going on on the economy of India, on the stock exchange. It doesn't matter. My economy is still on the way up. My economy is still growing. Why? Because my prosperity is dependent on God. He says, you will meet all my needs according to his riches in glory. And if you take a look at glory, you will realize that there are so many amazing things that are happening in glory. Amen. In glory, there are no shortages. In glory, uh, you begin to see that there is a, a God begins to pave his streets with gold. In glory, you begin to realize uh, that God is a city that has 12 foundations and all of them are made out of precious stone. Man, when you start focusing on God's kind of prosperity. I'm telling you, there's going to be a shift at, 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 at your mind. There's going to be a shift on your thinking and you're going to start aligning yourself with this pandemic proof uh, prosperity that's available uh, for you. I grew up in a three-roomed house, used to sleep under the kitchen table and we would have missionaries come out uh, to, to, to our neighborhood and none of them ever told me that God had a plan for me to prosper. Uh, maybe they didn't know or they hid this truth from me. So for 22 years, I didn't know that God has a, had a plan for me. And that plan was for me to have prosperity. For 22 years, I grew up in poverty. And all they did was try and glorify poverty. They would come and say, you know, poverty uh, is, a, is a spiritual thing to be poor. Well, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, there was nothing glorious about poverty. There was nothing glorious about going to bed hungry. There was nothing glorious about having to go to school and the teacher calling out your name uh, and embarrassing you in front of everybody because your school fees is two terms over. You. There was nothing glorious about wearing a school uniform uh, that had a patch on it because when I burnt it, ironing it, mama didn't have extra money to buy a new set of uniform. There was nothing glorious about having to wake up uh, uh, 10, you know, uh, 20 uh, hours before going to school to light a fire so I can warm up the water that I was going to wash in. Nothing glorious about going without. You know why? Because I couldn't help anybody in my poverty. See, poverty is not glorious. Poverty is not not from God. Poverty does not bless you and it doesn't give you the ability to bless others. You see, if you're poor, you can't bless others. Right now, man, I'm telling you, we're prospering. God is prospering us and we are able to be a blessing to 
others. During this global pandemic, we were able to give away thousands of runs because God is prospering us. We are able to travel all over the world and preach the gospel because God is prospering us. When you begin to operate in the prosperity of God, you all of a sudden are empowered to be a blessing to somebody else. When you see someone hungry, you can all of a sudden buy them food. When you see them, someone uh, uh, cold, you can all of a sudden take off a coat and give it to them and say, hey, listen, be warm. When you see someone going through stuff, you are able to step up. I've been able in my short life, I've been able to give away cars. I've been able to give away groceries. I've been able to give away clothes. You know why? Because that's what prosperity does. And that's the purpose of prosperity. The purpose of prosperity is not to indulge. The purpose of prosperity is not to uh, spend. It is not to consume. The purpose of prosperity, it is so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Second Corinthians chapter number nine, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter number nine. Uh, let me read actually verse eight. Second Corinthians nine verse eight. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. If you read the same verse in the New Living Translation, it says, and God will generously provide all that you need. Notice it says God. It didn't say, and your job. It didn't say, uh, and your boss. It didn't say, and your business. Hey, your job and your business are great, but they're not the ones that are looking after you. Mm, that's good. Your job and your business are a great source of, of income, but that's not where you're getting your provision. Your provision is coming from God. God may use your job and your business as a channel, but you you should never make the mistake of thinking that your business is your source. No, it is not. God is your source. And when you make God your source, let me tell you, God will supernaturally provide for you. And it says here, God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. I want you to notice the construction of that verse, that the word plenty is on the sharing with other side of the ledger. The word plenty is never on the consumption side of the ledger. You know why? Because you can only consume so much. Consumption is a limit. Uh, uh, you know, I've been to one of these uh, uh, eat all you can buffets. Anybody ever been on the eat, you know, in one of these restaurants where they say eat all you can? I've been to one of those and, and, and I've been to one of those with the mindset that, you know what, I'm going to make them pay. I'm coming here to make them regret ever coming up with such a stupid idea. I walk into those places thinking I'm going to eat at least 10 plates. But how many of you realize that after about one plate, I'm already full and I can't eat no more. You know why? Because consumption has a limit. But how many of you know that I could cause major damage if I went into that place with the community in mind, just filling up plates and looking for hungry people outside? Man, I could go for a hundred plates. And that's what God wants you to have as a mindset when it comes to prosperity. When you come to the grace of prosperity with the mindset of being a blessing, you literally take the limits off of how much stuff begins to flow in your direction. Man, I'm telling you, God will literally begin to send stuff your way because he knows the stuff won't take over your heart, but that the stuff will be there to be a blessing so that you can be a blessing uh, to others. So I want to just submit to you that, that while we're dealing with this uh, subject of prosperity, I want to remind you uh, that, that the, the, the purpose of prosperity is to be a blessing. The purpose of prosperity is not to uh, uh, buy extra stuff. The purpose of prosperity uh, is not to consume. The purpose of prosperity is to be a blessing. Uh, if you read in Luke chapter number 12, verse 15, it's interesting. Uh, there's a gentleman who was getting ready to reap a bumper harvest. He was getting ready to harvest more than uh, he had ever seen in his entire life. And uh, Jesus was teaching us about uh, being a blessing to others uh, with the prosperity. And he says in Luke 12, uh, from verse 15 to 21, 
If this is blessing you, I want to encourage you to just type amen in the comment section right now. Just type amen. If you're on Facebook, man, send the likes, the, the clicks, and, uh, you know, the hearts, and just, just show us some love. Amen. It says in Luke 12, verse 15, this is Jesus speaking. This is not Tafara. This is Jesus. Jesus uh, said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things uh, that he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Uh, so he had extra. How many of you know exactly what you should, you should have done with extra? Uh, uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 8, we know that when the extra comes, it's now open season for us to be a blessing to someone else. It is open season for us to be a blessing uh, to the church, to Ecclesia Church. It is open season for us to be a blessing to the community at Ecclesia Church. It is open season for you to find someone that may be in need, a ministry, partner with the ministry, and so on and so forth. That's what you do with plentiful, but not this guy. He says, this guy uh, thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build uh, a greater barns. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. Now, you and I don't store our goods and barns anymore. I mean, we don't do barns. We do bank accounts. So essentially what this guy was saying was, you know, I'm just going to keep a big bank, uh, bank balance and I'm just going to smile every single time I look at it. Oh, man, I'm just going to look at it and have a big chuckle. I'm just going to look at it and, and feel great. Essentially, what this guy was doing was he was moving his trust from God, his source from God to his bonds. He was moving his trust and his source from God to his bank account. Let us not never ever make a mistake to where we think that the money in our bank account is the one that's taking care of us. No, it is Jesus that takes care of us. It is God that takes care of us. And this this, this gentleman here, he didn't realize that. He said, I'm going to tear down barns. I'm going to build bigger barns and I'm going to store all my goods and my crops. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose uh, will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich uh, towards God. So the attitude when dealing with, uh, with finances is uh, God wants us uh, to have an attitude of being a blessing uh, to somebody else, not hoarding. Uh, there's a spirit of hoarding uh, that comes upon people uh, when a crisis hits. And it's a terrible spirit and it disturbs me a lot. You know, in our particular context, when they announced uh, that there was a, a COVID global pandemic that's happening, uh, people were going to uh, stores hoarding toilet paper. I don't know what that, I don't know how that's going to help you in a global pandemic. Uh, toilet paper. I mean, I'd go and hoard food, not to hoard it. I mean, it's a terrible thing, but it makes you irrational. See, when you, when you, when you have a mindset of hoarding, it makes you irrational. Why are you hoarding toilet paper? How's that going to help you? I mean, toilet paper for real, of all the things in the store, people were, rushing and fighting, punching each other in the face for toilet. Are you kidding me? Man, we are better than that. <laughs> but that's what happens when you have a mindset of hoarding, when you have a mindset of, you know, uh, my name is Jimmy, I'll take all you give me, and my surname is more. Uh, uh, give me more when, when you, all you want, when all you're focusing on is self, man, it's, it, it begins to make you irrational. But when you are thinking about others, God will begin to channel all the resources into your, your ministry, into your life. Uh, here's the principle. As one hand receives, the other hand gives. And as the money flows through, there'll be plenty for you. You'll never find a horse pipe. That's what we call them out here, a pipe. You'll never find a horse pipe in the world that lets you know, uh, 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 water flow through it and it never gets wet. You know, every horse pipe, when you let stuff flow through it, some of that stuff is going to stick on you. And there's a child of God when you decide to become a distribution center. I don't know where you're at in your life right now. I don't know uh, where you're at in dealing with finances and resources. 
I, I don't know where you're at, but let me, let me tell you, when you begin to uh, uh, focus on changing your heart, see, there's one thing you can walk away with uh, from this meeting tonight. You can walk away with a different heart. You can walk away with a heart that says I'm prospered by God. You can walk away with a heart that says when God gives me resources, I'm going to use them uh, to bless the kingdom of God. I'm going to use them uh, to bless others. It's one thing. It's a decision away. It's one thing you can walk away uh, with tonight. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at the, at the time. It looks like, you know, my time is almost far spent. Uh, but I was going to read one more scripture. If you allow me, Pastor Pram, just one more scripture. Uh, in Luke Pastor, chapter you can number take your 16. time. No problem at all. In Luke chapter number 16. You can wait for one uh, more hour also. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I was gonna go back to Genesis because remember, uh, there are a few things that God said to mankind. The first thing He said was prosper. The second thing He said was reproduce and fill up the earth. And He said, man, I want you to do all these things. And I was gonna go back and look at uh, the word reproduce and show you that that word is not just limited to uh, procreation. It's not just limited to uh, having children on the earth. It's, it's it, it goes way beyond that. See. God could have planted the entire garden, uh, the entire universe, I beg your pardon, uh, but God